Hello. In this video, we will talk about transport across an epithelium. Let's get started. As we have seen in the video on milieu interior, the epithelium is a lining between the interior of the body and the outside world. For example, outer layer of the skin, the lumen of the intestine, renal tubules, etc. all are lined with epithelium. Yes, content of intestine and renal tubules are although physically inside our body, they are in direct continuation with the outside world. So transporting a substance across epithelium means either taking it into the body from outside world, for example, absorption of nutrients by the intestine or removing it out of the body, for example, secretion of waste products by the kidney. See, for other cells in the body, transport work includes transport across a single membrane. That is relatively simple. But here we are talking about transport across cells. This is a different situation and it requires special arrangements. So let's talk about these arrangements. First, the epithelial cells make a continuous sheet. This sheet separates two distinct solutions. Inside we have extracellular fluid or in broad sense blood and outside we have content that is in continuation with the outside world. For example, luminal content of intestine or filtrate in case of renal tubules. The cells in the sheet are connected by tight junctions. These junctions separate two sides of cell membrane. The side of the cell facing the lumen is called the luminal or apical membrane and the side facing inside is called a basolateral membrane. Now comes the most important part. These two sets of the cell contain a different set of transport proteins. For example, in the proximal tubule, luminal membrane contains sodium glucose co-transporters, sodium hydrogen exchanger, etc. And basolateral membrane contains sodium potassium ATPase pump, glucose transporter, etc. In the video on membrane proteins, we have seen that membrane proteins can freely move in the plane of the membrane. However, in the epithelium, this movement is restricted by junctional complexes. The transport proteins cannot go beyond the junctions. So transporters on apical membrane stay on the apical membrane and transporters on the basolateral membrane stay on the basolateral membrane. This is very important to get a net movement of a substance across the cell. Let's understand it with an example of reabsorption of sodium at the collecting duct. It contains sodium potassium ATPase pump on the basolateral side and epithelial sodium channels on the luminal side. Sodium potassium ATPase pump actively moves sodium from cell into the interstitium. This decreases sodium concentration inside the cell. This creates a gradient for sodium entry across the luminal membrane and sodium diffuses down this gradient. This ongoing process results in a net movement of sodium from lumen into the interstitium. Now let's see what would happen if tight junctions were not there. In that case, all the transport proteins would spread all over the membrane. So now we have all type of transporters on both the sides. Here sodium potassium pump moves sodium out on both sides. This does decrease sodium concentration inside the cell, but then it diffuses into the cell from both the sides. Now look at the overall movement. Sodium is moving round and round. Although the transport proteins are doing their work, there is no net movement in any direction. They are just wasting energy. Luckily we have junctions that prevent this mixing. So basolateral membrane have only pumps that extrude sodium into the interstitium and luminal membrane have only channels through which sodium enters the cell. So we get net movement of sodium in the desired direction. In a nutshell, tight junction prevents mixing of protein on two sides of the cell that in turn allows net movement of a substance in desired direction. So far we have talked about transport through the cell. It is called transcellular movement. Along with this, Substances can also move through the space in between two cells. This is called paracellular movement. The passage through this path depends on how tight the junctions are. 
सम जंक्शन आर लीक ही अलाउिंग पैरा सेल्युलर मूवमेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द प्रॉक्सिमल पार्ट ऑफ द रीनल ट्यूब्यूल वेर इज अदर्स आर टाइट एंड डू नॉट अलाउ द पैसेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल कलेक्टिंग डॉट सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट ट्रांस एपिथीलियल मूवमेंट लेट्स हैव अ क्विक समरी द एपिथीलियम सेपरेट्स द इंटरनल एनवायरमेंट ऑफ अवर बॉडी फ्रॉम द एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड और द कंटेंट इन डायरेक्ट कंटिन्यूएशन विथ एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल ल्यूमेन ऑफ इंटेस्टाइन और रीनल ट्यूब्यूल Transport across the epithelium is required to absorb substances into the body or to excrete it out of the body. It can occur by the transcellular or paracellular route. Transcellular movement occurs through the transport proteins on the cell membrane. For this, apical and basolateral membranes contain distinct set of transport proteins to allow a net movement of substance in the desired direction. This distinction is maintained by junctional proteins. Paracellular movement occurs through the space in between the cells. Extent of this movement depends on how tight the junctions are. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.